oftentimes when people envision technology in the classroom, they think of kind of that single writer option where students are staring at a screen and just answering questions on their own. And we like to use technology in more effective ways with what we're doing with our students. So we will often use the technology part uh, just in small snippets. A student might be learning about something in the Revolutionary War, let's say, and someone might watch a video Another student might read a timeline, another student might watch a little mini documentary. And then they take some notes on that, whether it be paper, pencil, or on the screen. But then they come together in an activity we call Iron Chef, which is basically a jigsaw, where they put their pieces and parts of information together and create a greater knowledge base for each other. So it's not the only interaction with the text or the material, it's a different interaction with it. And so the tech is used very intentionally and purposefully to bring about a better learning uh, and engagement for students. At Thurston, we have block periods, and when I'm designing lessons for those block periods, I'm really mindful of how often the kids are on their computer. I know that I need to have a blend of on-device work and off-device work. It helps break up the lesson for kids, it keeps things fresh, and uh, it keeps the learning activities engaging for the kids. So some of the signature practices that I use are for formative assessment with my students are Pear Deck, I use that quite a bit. I get to see the student work in real time and again, uh, connect with those students who might need follow up with one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, I also use formative.com. It again provides students with immediate feedback and gives me summary reports on my teacher end so I can identify students who need extension or reteaching. I use Snorkel mostly for assignments that students are finishing at the end of class or take home to do homework. I like it because it's usually one problem that is quintessential to what we've been learning the last couple of days. And also it makes the students show all of their work on the screen and then also talk to the computer, which the AI then analyzes. So we're getting not only this written work from students, we're getting this verbal conversation about the topic they're working on. Everybody's getting different questions. And so in turn, their feedback is different. So it provides them with that customized one-on-one -on -one feedback specific to the problem they were working on. Areas in my classroom where I don't like to use tech are when students are exploring new concepts or are trying to extend their thinking. I utilize my whiteboard walls in my classroom so students can work in small groups and use the vertical non-permanent surfaces to explore and try things and make errors. And that also allows me to connect with them one-on-one uh, -on, -one on maybe a non-traditional surface. The science department uses technology really intentionally in that we have a host of things that we do with students in order to have them interact with each other, collect data, learn about the science. We do things like online simulations where students can see what's happening on a molecular level, which you can't see in person. We use Pear Deck to collect formative information and to use it to help them foster discussions about the science that they're learning. So there's a lot of group work that goes on with the technology. Hand in hand, they work together to move students forward in their science learning. The cool thing about technology is that it's a lot more guided than the hands-on manipulatives that we have. So the students are able to do the really guided work on the computer simulation, and then they're able to use things like molecular model kits and build the molecules in such a way that they understand because they've already done the online simulation of those molecular model builds. The technology is aiding the students being able to understand on a deeper level what is going on in a chemical reaction that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. You could write a chemical reaction, but that's not the same thing as seeing the reaction happen on that molecular level. And without technology, there would be no way to see that. After they've learned stuff through the simulations or through the graphing that they've done or the data collection that they have done, they'll do group uh, modeling on a whiteboard. So we do a lot of low-tech work as well the technology supports the low-tech work that we're able to do with students.